Welcome to the Free Dive Cafe, episode 146 with Gary McGrath. My name is Donnie. I'm the host of the Free Dive Cafe. The Free Dive Cafe is the long form interview podcast that explores the backstories, the training, the challenges, and the combined wisdom and personal philosophies of the world's free divers. You can find this podcast at freedivecafe.com, on my main website at freediveandthrive.com, and of course, you can find it on all the good podcast players. Follow me on Instagram at freediveandthrive to stay up to date with everything I'm doing and all the podcast releases. Uh, Gary, lovely to meet you again. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, First yeah, time, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you guys are, uh, uh, well, obviously you guys are here, otherwise... This is a weird, a weird way to just, start, but yeah. yeah. But uh, we we were here. When was it? Saturday? Yeah, yeah. We were here on Saturday. That was like uh, four days ago, five days ago, and we did this uh, interview, and we got a good uh, hour into it. I think it was like fifty. More than that. Yeah, it was like fifty-eight <laughs> minutes. I had on the camera, and um, the camera, the battery <laughs> fell out the front of the camera, <laughs> and uh, wiped the memory card at the same time. So. We're hoping for a better performance this yeah, time. Yeah, we've had a warm up now, mm-hmm. just rehearsal. Fully warmed up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, you were first on the show, I think. Uh, do you remember what episode it was? One. Oh, I, I remember because it was. I think it was quite one ten or something like that. Because it was quite close to my personal your, best your, dive. It was quite your, funny. Your dive. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just uh... one ten, maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. It was one hundred and nine. Was the first one. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then the training talk. Yeah, so that and then yeah. we did the training talk. Um, so um, we're going to c- use this opportunity to catch up with uh, Gary since his amazing performance last year yeah. at Vertical Blue. Um, maybe uh, we can start there. And uh, well, first of all, uh, getting to Vertical Blue and getting started was a little bit of a drama in mm. itself so maybe you can give us a little bit of insight into the lead up to the competition and yeah there was some like very personal stuff happening there as well yeah. which we're going to go into detail about yeah. later but in terms of the logistics and stuff how how was it getting to yeah. the most uh, elitist free diving competition <laughs> in the world last uh, last year yeah um i think the the preparation the run-up started probably about 12 years ago <laughs> when I first saw VB and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and then uh, some friends over the years have been going to that place and telling me how amazing it is to dive in and then that sowed the seed, you know. And it was it was a weird little flash of, um, of something that just made me sort of throw my name into the ring around Christmas that year. Um, and I just thought, sod it, let's let's just try. So, did you apply? You didn't get invited. I was, I was the the invite was due to my numbers, but I hadn't hadn't made that official. Right. So it was like I was invited, but right. but it was it was a. Is that how it works for everyone that it's invitation? No, only no. In past years, it has it was in in the early ones, it was only invitation right. only, and yeah. in those early days the the athletes were doing the safety as well. You know, there was a yeah, little yeah. team and they were safety on their days off and stuff. Um, but no, you get invited back if you've got rankings from the previous years, mm-hmm. you get a bit of priority mm-hmm. and then it opens up to fill the remaining spaces. Okay, yeah. okay. right. <clears throat> and is that based on uh, overall rankings in Ida and CMAS? Or? I, I, I'm not sure. It just says rankings. Whichever so organization I, they go with that year. Perhaps, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not exactly sure right. um, because it just says rankings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I decided to throw my hat into the ring and um, and apply, and paid my money, and that made it very real. And then and then you know, the problem was actually making it happen. <laughs> yeah, which was a whole other set of stories. 
um that was i had a lot of help from a lot of people some good friends um george and dan um dan verhoven the photographer and georgina miller the the awesome british freediver they were very instrumental in kicking me up the bum mm. really and it, it just to apologize if someone is listening maybe they're a little bit more new to free diving sometimes we forget when we're having these conversations that not everybody is deeply embedded in the free diving community like we are vertical blue is kind of considered to be the uh the most prestigious competition mm -hmm. in free diving uh, in the calendar year yeah and it takes place in uh, in the bahamas um which is exclusive enough but then also in in the long island bahamas which is quite a you know remote part of the bahamas and then so logistically it's difficult to get to and yeah. uh it's very very expensive so um it's you know not only quite a prestigious competition but a challenging one to to mm. make happen for a lot of uh, divers right? yeah but but the draw is that it's in uh that place called dean's blue hole which is a sinkhole 205 meters deep or something like that and it's it is test tube conditions it's yeah. laboratory standard yeah. it's so, perfect so similar to our blue hole here which is a frustratingly like yeah just short of 100 meters yeah um but uh, even better conditions there. yeah and yeah. less falafel yeah yeah <laughs> less, less less amoebas yeah uh, less yeah, amoebas yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but it's it's magical and that's why uh, people can really perform well there and it's attracted um, you know there's ridiculous amount of world records uh, mm. have been set there you know mm. yeah was it you that was saying that um you were surprised how small it seemed when you got there yeah yeah, yeah. um i mean that dan said to me if you can when you go there, get someone to like lead you by the hand and like blindfold you and then stand with your feet in the water and open your eyes. I was with Stefan Randig. Mm -hmm. I didn't want him to blindfold me and hold my hands. <laughs> I would let Stefan blindfold me and take me anywhere, man. Walk me naked into the desert any night, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, I felt a bit awkward asking. I could probably ask him now. We're better friends now. Um, but um, so I didn't do that. I walked myself down, sort of tried to look at the floor lifted my head and yeah that was my very first impression was oh, that's a lot smaller than mm. i thought because mm -hmm. i've only ever seen it through the lens of cameras and stuff and social media and stuff mm. and um yeah it's small but it's it's hemmed in on like three sides almost by cliffs so you feel like you're standing on a stage at the bottom of an amphitheater so it does yeah that that is something so i it didn't put me off it felt like this is where it happens. Mm -hmm. This is where it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, it didn't intimidate me. Um, or to be honest, it did for the first few days. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I got used to it. And it was like, okay, this is a stage for me to perform on, you know, rather than rather than making mm -hmm. me sort of cower and, and be shy. It was, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really, I really thought that mm -hmm. the, the natural sort of uh, uh, architecture of it mm -hmm. was really beautiful, yeah logistically speaking like what was the first major uh, challenge that you had in getting to vb uh paying for the flies, for the flies. <laughs> yeah and then after that we had some issues with the equipment right? oh yeah, yeah 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 that was the start i left so i left <laughs> egypt went over to ibiza to run my yoga and free diving retreats that i run with my partner lynn mm -hmm. link at the bottom yep link at the bottom yeah. um mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I transited through Napoli, had a lovely 20 hour layover in a hotel in Napoli, did some sightseeing, it was at some good food, pizza for breakfast, I felt mm. like a king. Um, and then when I checked in to fly to Ibiza, I never saw my bag again. Mm. And this was a bag I'd packed to live out of for mm. the next three months and to go to VB with. So monofin, wetsuit, mm. neck weight, everything goggles, yeah. uh, everything, swim kit, it, the whole lot, clothes, everything, disappeared. Um, EasyJet pretty much did nothing to help me, and it's it's in fact yeah. In a couple of weeks, it will be a year, and I'm still yet to receive a penny. Right. Um, even the emergency money you're supposed to get immediately to pay for toothbrush and, and underwear, you know, uh, I haven't seen a penny. Yeah. So thanks very much, guys. Yeah. Well, e EasyJet isn't notoriously low quality uh, um, flyer anyway, isn't mm. it? So yeah, good luck with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will get something one day, but I've there, just... there are probably like hundreds of medical professionals who have lost uh, advanced medical scanning technology that they have to prioritize before yeah. they figure out what this weird fucking 
finny. Yeah, that's the frustrating thing. thing. My monofin is sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Yeah. No one knows what it is. Yeah. And I li literally, the most distinctive bag they've got, it's triangular for God's yeah, sake, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. Every, yeah. I guarantee it's yeah. the only one they have in their yeah. warehouse. Yeah, <laughs> even more sad is that you were saying that eventually what they do is they auction off these yeah. items. So I've looked into this system a lot uh -huh. and they hold them for an, a certain amount of time that they're legally obliged to and then they sell them to mm -hmm. a second company yeah. who then auction them off. There's right. websites where you can buy lost <laughs> bags. But it's sad because like, that beautiful monofin that's sitting there like nobody's going to know what the hell it is no. nobody's going to want to buy it no someone's going to use it to like fan their barbecue yeah, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. you know yeah 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 use it as a big plate or something <laughs> yeah um so you had some trouble getting your gear but you were saved in the end by um i was saved by well dave phillips yeah. helped me out dave phillips from saltfish freediving mm -hmm. ibiza another shout out Thank if you you're bottom. in the med and you want to train with a really awesome guy mm -hmm. go to ibiza and see mm -hmm. dave he he just he just gave me all his stuff you know he lucky he had a monofin it was a size too small but we stretched it out by boiling the pockets a bit mm -hmm. and those you know those old-fashioned foot things you put in mm -hmm. an old leather shoe yeah, to yeah, stretch yeah, them yeah, yeah, yeah. his mum had one of them so we we used them and and yeah it fitted really well so he let me have that let me use his wetsuit to train in mm -hmm. deep humans from turkey the wetsuit manufacturer they stepped right up um saika erkuman put mm -hmm. me in touch with them mm -hmm. And you have um, a lovely Deep Humans uh, t-shirt on right yeah, now. Yeah, the back's which, even better. Yeah, which reminds me that <clears throat> I'm actually wearing a lovely new t-shirt, which um, Anna in Bali uh, makes, and she sent me. I've got one of those coming one as well. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, 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 should, yeah, I should go and pick it up. Yeah, yeah she sent that with uh, um, her, her friend came a couple of days ago and brought yeah. us all the way from Bali. So totally stoked about that. Thanks, Anna. And yeah, I think thanks. you can buy them in the shop. I'll find out what the link is and put that mm. at the bottom as well. Um, yeah so, so dave saved your ass dave did dave saved my ass by by freezing his ass mm -hmm. giving me his good suit basically mm -hmm. and we trained in in all through may and june in ibiza and the water's a little bit fresh in this thermoclines mm -hmm. but uh he didn't moan he, he he knew he knew i needed a bit of a help mm -hmm. so yeah he let me use his biofins and everything so and then he let me take his monofin all the way across to the bahamas mm -hmm. and i've still got his monofin actually. yeah and it's yeah. probably going to be uh if you're watching the youtube version you'll probably be looking at it right now because mm. all the footage that we got from the other day there is you wearing his uh of course monofin, yeah right? But uh, thanks to uh, good friends, you finally yeah. made it to the Bahamas, and you know ultimately you ended up um, getting a new national record for mm -hmm. the UK. It was a bit of a uh, uh, a goal for you, as I guess. Yeah. Um, tell us like about the process of because that starts the year before as well doesn't yeah, it? yeah that story starts the year before it starts the sort of two winters before really where my my diving just progressed mm. really well i think that the last time we spoke you would have like been recovering from covid you would have attempted that dive you would not have just almost not succeeded yeah and um and then we were talking to you as you were i think it was winter time actually yeah. and uh yeah so but eventually through the year you got back up there yeah so so i i was poised to do that record in the may competition in sharm el sheikh of that year was it 2021 i think does that work out anyway oh. anyway a couple of mays ago <laughs> and um yeah I, I the training had gone so well I'd, I'd done 111 twice in training uh, and then it was just a one meter increase. First day of the comp, I thought, why not go 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 big, you know? And the dive was awful. Uh, I got I got DQ'd for, it, it said DQTT on the sheet and I had to ask Catherine, the judge, what on earth that meant. It was, it was DQ for a tumble turn. So they saw me um, around 90-ish from the bottom cameras they could see that I had fallen like almost horizontal. Mm. And I have a memory of this. I have a, a, a rough memory of feeling the rope on the back of my neck going horizontally, which is not right. Mm. No. And I just not fell out of position. Neck, no. and, and, and that doesn't happen to me. That's, that's never happened to me. Mm. My free falls are, are, are very um, sort of, uh, they're accurate, you know. And um, so that was weird. And then I remember the turn being a little bit clumsy. And I don't remember much about the ascent because narcosis was quite heavy. And I had a hell of a fight on the surface, but I didn't dip. Didn't dip. I was I was actually a few seconds over the 15-second window. You Whatever get. they say, he didn't dip. Yeah. But it's a hell of a fight. Mm -hmm. And and it's funny. In, in that, There's a video of it on my Instagram, and you can see um, 
Roberto uh, Butera, who was head of safety there, mm. his face, he's just looking at me like, oh, he's, <laughs> he's almost going to go. Yeah, yeah. And I was just wobbling around mm-hmm. like crazy. I wonder if we can get some footage. Uh, yeah, it's that, all in yeah. the video. I'll yeah, see yeah, if yeah, I can yeah. snatch yeah, off yeah. a little clip. I've probably got yeah. the original, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so that was unfortunate. Um, and then that afternoon after that dive, I was absolutely exhausted, which, you know, I'm normally a little bit tired, but I was exhausted. And I slept by the pool for about two hours, which is very unusual. And then that evening, COVID symptoms, next mm. morning, full power COVID. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it was yeah. rough, man. It was 10 days of, yeah, it was it was scary. It wasn't yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had, I had it too. And um I think at that point, like everyone was kind of at that point, mid 2021, everyone was kind of like downplaying uh, COVID and stuff. And you had it pretty bad and you were saying you were coughing up blood as well. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty much laid low with it for a week. But there was about four or five of us at that comp that came down. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was maybe one of the first, Mm -hmm. but yeah, a few people. Yeah. Yeah. But you obviously fully recovered and Mm. uh, went through your trials and tribulations to get to Vertical Blue. And then, yeah, tell us about the comp. Yeah, so um, the comp went fantastic. Just due to money and and life, I couldn't go out there for as long as I wanted to. Um, But actually, it worked out all right. I think too long on that island would send you insane because there is not a lot to do Mm -hmm, there. mm -hmm. Um, It's a good place to potentially like Mm hyper-focus, but I can't do that for too long. My my deep training window has to be fairly small. Mm -hmm. I've got 10 dives in a row Mm -hmm. in me before I need a break. So I got out mm. about three weeks before the comp, you know, mm. a few days to get rid of jet lag, which was actually not that bad. Um, after about four days, I felt absolutely fine. I wasn't waking up in the middle of the night anymore. Um, and then training, yeah, training went well. My progression was good. The first day was definitely a bit rough, just getting used to a new place. And I was a bit concerned because 40 meter dives felt sketchy. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, they weren't feeling <laughs> yeah. nice, yeah. but I soon broke the back of that within two two sessions, really. And then my progression was like 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Mm -hmm. Um, 10-meter jumps, um, obviously, with little rest days in between. Mm. Um, And I progressed. I did like 104 in training before the comp. Um, And then my first comp dive was 101. Yeah, Mm. which was, that was the most emotional dive I've ever had because it was such an effort to get there. Um, a lot of people helped me out. I mean, I, I should probably mention, I, I crowdfunded, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. George and Dan spent months convincing me to crowdfund. Mm-hmm. It didn't sit easy with me. It's very difficult to learn to accept. It's difficult to ask mm-hmm. for help. Um, you know, pride, of course. But they they drummed it into me that people were willing to help. And uh, eventually I believed that and set up the crowdfunding. And people did help. And I'm just forever grateful. Yeah. And and hopefully I entertained people. Mm. Uh, oh, you certainly did. We were watching you in uh, Dahab Freedivers, bro. Yeah. You were super entertained. Brilliant. Yeah. I think you, you, luckily your dive was one of the like the dives that actually streamed without uh, oh, yeah. any, any issues. So. I think the very first dive, <clears throat> the feed cut. I think so, yeah. 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 But yeah, after that first dive, man, I just broke down. It was so, so emotional. Like, you know, that's a dream for 10 years. I, I wouldn't have even cared how deep that dive was, mm-hmm. but just to be there mm-hmm. and do a dive in mm-hmm. that competition was just magic. Yeah. It was uh, magic. 100 meter dive and first dive at Vertical Blue. First yeah. time getting there. I mean, yeah. it's nuts. Yeah. That's the stuff of dreams <laughs> right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you had that amazing uh, first dive at VB, and then um, what was the process leading up to the 112th dive? Um, yeah, the progression was sort of, well, they, they, there's rules now that you can't go um, a certain amount of meters over a dive that you haven't done in the last mm-hmm. year and a half, you know, and they don't mm-hmm. want you doing big jumps. Mm-hmm. So I had to respect that and think, actually, okay, I've been to 111 very cleanly a number of times before but not in the last year Mm. so i had to progress up i knew the first two or three dives i had to make clean otherwise i wasn't going to be allowed Mm. to make the jumps up to the national record Mm. so that did bring in a little bit of of stress Mm -hmm. uh knowing but but i tried to take my focus off that record i sort of surrendered to that a few weeks before to be honest mm-hmm. i yeah. said look just take this pressure off you've had a real shit run of it losing your stuff and a lot of stress yeah. so just get there it, that, that became the only goal was just to arrive and i ticked that off you know 
So, um, yeah, first dive 10, uh, 101, which went very well. And then I had to do, um, I think I had to do 106. That was right. And I'd only been to 104 in, in the last year, mm. you know. So that was a bit of a ballsy dive. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that took some work, mental work. And yeah, I had to dig deep for that one, but I got it, you know. And then it was like, uh, and then I did 109. And then, uh, and then I think one one eleven, and then one twelve, or no, or one hundred nine to one twelve. I think I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were just uh, bashing out the constant weight monofin dives. Uh, yeah, I just this, I just uh, stuck to yeah. stuck to one thing. Um, didn't spread myself too thin, um, and yeah, it it's, it seemed to work. <laughs> well, congratulations on your now being the uh, deepest man ever from the UK. Yeah self-powered freediving thanks for making it that little bit more difficult for me to <laughs> achieve anything realistic in the yeah. near future but um i'll try <laughs> yeah actually you know little shout out to british freediving uh, we're looking in a really good place at the moment mm-hmm. there's there's some really deep boys you know you've got mm-hmm. the two deans Chipolina mm-hmm. and charles mm-hmm. oh, okay dean competes for the uk yeah gibraltar oh. yeah so oh. he's, he's british yeah also oh, gibraltar yeah is, gibraltar's british uh, officially yeah officially you can't show so much i know <laughs> yeah and then, and then I uh, met some lovely guys over in Cash who are up and coming. You're going to be doing some damage soon on the competition circuit, aren't you? But no, I think there's there's some deep, deep, deep guys in in, in the UK at the mm-hmm. moment, and it's exciting. Yeah, not so much in the way on the girls' side, huh? No, um, there's there's a few uh, real promising talents mm-hmm. they're coming mm-hmm. definitely want to shout out some names uh well ruth ruth osborne, ruth osborne you know okay, yeah, I, yeah, i've yeah. i've mm-hmm. i've known her for a, a while actually mm-hmm. i knew her before she started freediving mm-hmm. um and uh yeah she's extremely dedicated mm-hmm. and is willing to completely apply and adjust her mm-hmm. whole life to train and mm-hmm. it's it's quite admirable mm-hmm. um so yeah she's got some promise and then i want to i want to try and get alice hickson out here mm-hmm. diving um, mm-hmm. If she can she's find time, out here? she's not been out here. No, uh-huh, but I want to okay. get her working on her depth because mm-hmm. she's an absolute monster. She's world she's class in the pool. In the huh? pool. Yeah. World class. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, good luck to everyone who's um, you know trying to get deeper or trying to go further. And well done to yourself. And you, you are hoping, planning to go back this year for Vertical Blue. Yeah. But again, like we were, you know, we talked about this before. Like Gary is not a rich guy and has crowdfunded his last trip to vertical blue and you're going to do that again this year the crowdfund is still running still open mm-hmm. um uh i'm i'm sort of setting my sights slightly further afield in the work that i'm doing to generate money i'm looking um i'm talking to an agent i'm trying to find a proper sponsorship deal mm-hmm. like a proper paid financial sponsorship deal i'm very grateful to be sent equipment of course yeah but uh, you you can't buy flights with a, yeah, with a pair yeah. of fins, so yeah. Yeah, so and if you guys don't know, like you know, you might because you see uh, top level free divers jetting around the world and going to places like the Bahamas. The fact is that very very few of 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 us guys and girls actually have the independent financial means to do that. And it's kind of a constant hustle all the way through the year to make these things happen. Not to mention the you know, you know, mostly people are just getting equipment from sponsors, which is very nice, but you only have two pairs of feet and yeah. one head. So you can only, you know, wear so many masks and fins and snorkels and stuff like that. So uh, if you feel like supporting Gary on his next trip out to the Bahamas, then the link will be here at the bottom for the crowdfunding. And, you know, it means a lot to not, uh, you know, it means a lot, not just to Gary, but also for the whole free diving community, because we do our best to support each other and, uh, if someone comes in and takes up a little bit of slack and helps, it's much appreciated. It's, you can enjoy watching Gary again ah, from, from a distance and, yeah. uh, and hopefully amazing dives. Yeah, but I want to. I've been getting a lot of success from Instagram, excuse me, Instagram things, um, putting out videos, a bit more educational content. So I want to keep like feeding that to people. I th- I'm getting really lovely feedback from people about yeah. it, and it's uh, so this summer I want to I want to develop that a little bit more. Yeah. That's also a bit of a hustle as well, isn't it? You know, yeah. like the social media thing. It's you know, it's it's uh, hard work to, especially if you want to kind of be remain sincere and you don't want to like uh, you don't want to do this clickbaity shit and no. this, like, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's hard because I just I'm, I just want to provide uh, any uh, content that's interesting to mm-hmm. people that people can learn from. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm not holding any secrets when I when I coach people. You yeah, know, there's yeah. no secret methods or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. just it's just hard hard work and 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 um applying yourself 
That's all. Mm -hmm. So fucking help. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So, uh, yeah, of course, we're going to link to all your socials and stuff here so everyone can uh, find you if they don't know you already. Um, but you are essentially, you know, one of the deepest men in the world now, and especially, I mean, one of the deepest men actively uh, diving this mm. year, I would say. Um, here, uh, Matt's not going to be diving this year, uh, mm. Matt Molina and... Um, do you know if Tibor's going to VB this year? Not sure. He's in the early stages of developing his business yeah. in the Philippines. I so saw he dived not. 110 recently. Yeah, yeah. Solid. So, I mean, that's <laughs> impressive for yeah. the three years that he took off or something like yeah. that. So, yeah. But it's like, you know, this just speaks to the fact that staying, and this comes on to the next question I have, but staying at the kind of like level where you're able to do sub 100 meter dives is. Uh, you know you, you don't do that all through the year you can't no. be there all through the year even if you well maybe if you had like an unlimited um uh free time and finances and could absolutely curate every moment of your life you mm. you could to a certain extent stay at quite a high level yeah but, but i i probably wouldn't if someone if we were to wave, wave a magic wand and okay now you're a professional paid athlete i wouldn't be diving yeah, deep all year round at all it'd be miserable yeah. wouldn't it I, you got you got to be hungry for it, and that's what I realised in 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 through all those struggles, uh, getting to VB and uh, other competitions and stuff. Is it struggles make you better? <laughs> you know, mm. uh, uh, learning that patience is really helpful, and it, it's the struggles that make the end result worthwhile. So mm. I, I probably actually wouldn't change much. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just be able to. I, I'd like to bring in some external help. You know, like a personal trainer to take mm -hmm. care of my base training, yeah. um, so I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Um, and then, and then um, have a physio and stuff. You know, nutritionist. To, to, yeah, and, you know, uh, just things like that that mm -hmm. I I don't have space to think about. The in water stuff I can probably deal with, but you never know what you don't know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, just uh, earlier in the conversation, you you mentioned something along the lines of like your your peak time is quite short yeah and uh you said something about maybe you have like 10 10 deep dives yeah would, would that be like 10 deep dives in a in a block like a, a, like at the end of your training like your peak uh, peak of your training yeah yeah pro or, or probably like a mini peak to ten, 10 dives in a in a in a zone where and then i'd need to take a few days mm -hmm. or a week mm -hmm. kind of off you know um um away from like the deep line mm -hmm. you know after after that i get a bit i get a bit psychologically burnt out mm -hmm. if you're diving sub 100 can you do that back to back on back to back days i have done yeah i have done never more i've never done more than two days in in a row doing deeper than 100 um, but i have done yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's doable if you're getting good rest and, and you're in good shape. I think if you're doing, if you're getting good rest, good recovery, all other factors um, being considered are in good order that you could be staying deeper than 100 for an extended period of time? Potentially, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of variables there. But um, yeah, those, those deep dives, I, I, I'm not saying you should do that, but I have done that you know mm -hmm. and it, it but there's there's no doubt it's taxing <laughs> things mm -hmm. change below 100 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. definitely you uh so you uh you know in 2021 you attempted the 112 you did 111 quite easily a few times and then you did the 112 a year later in vertical blue mm -hmm. in that year and we're going to come to the you know the 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 meat of your problems um, that year uh, in a minute. But was there anything in that year through your training? Like, did anything fundamentally shift for you in terms of your training, how you approached training? Like, what, did you, what, what are the biggest lessons that you learned in the year leading up to that dive in VB? Um, so I, d I don't, it's not so much they were like technical lessons it's not like i learned new skills right. i think yeah. the skill base was there but i learned how to apply myself properly mm -hmm. and how to properly compartmentalize my training you know not not looking at a dive as an entire dive you know learning to split it up okay that's my weakest part of the dive how can i work on that mm -hmm. just getting a bit more method mm -hmm. um i did a lot of reading and research about training methods and stuff like that from other sports because mm -hmm. there's virtually nothing written about free diving yeah. um 
And then also, I, I'm quite fortunate as I work as a coach. So I was applying it mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. um, kind of using them as an experimentation, really. Yeah. Um, so I got to work out how people responded and what worked and what didn't. And then I just applied yeah. that to myself. It was, it was good, yeah. I've had a guy now who I'm coaching. Uh, he's in Florida. He's been out the water for months now for the winter. And uh, he... Uh, he hates run. I, I love sp sprint intervals. I think sprint intervals are like super uh, valuable for uh, building your engine. And um, but he hates running, so <laughs> I, I made him do sprints in the pool. And then he hurt his shoulder. I was like, okay, what's next? Doesn't have a bike. Okay, so I got him on the jump rope. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> I got him on the jump rope with the heart rate monitor, so yeah. I could he could prove that he was doing like prove absolute it. maximum efforts on the <laughs> jump rope. And he's, he keeps sending me the pictures from like twice a week from his. I'm sorry, Matt. I still haven't done it myself. So it's like <laughs> experimentation by proxy, but it seems to be really effective, you know. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> I just did three weeks of Muay Thai, man. I skipped my that's high intense enough. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was just just the amount of jumping rope and that. Actually, to be honest, with you. Um, so you experimented and uh, and you you got a little bit more smart about your training yeah. methodology. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, um, I. Certainly, EQ was fairly dependable in recent years, but I developed a lot more methods to train it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I took I took Federico Manner's instructor course mm -hmm. to to learn his mm -hmm. methods of teaching EQ, and mixing that in with the knowledge I've got. Um, I, I think I'm in a really good place to to help people with EQ. Yeah. And, I, and I've yeah. I've certainly eliminated any sort of major problems that I ever had, and, mm -hmm. and I can depend on yeah. my mouth feel now. You do uh, you do the Federico Mana? Um, what's the name of the uh, system that's got silly name? Uh, share. Share. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do this share uh, thing. Uh, yeah, I actually have access to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, supp I'm supposed to review it for him. It's been like cool. a year and a half now. <laughs> um, but it looks uh, it looks pretty good. Um, you offer that coaching online as well, right? Yeah, I do coaching yeah. online. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I can do like an uh, intro sort of um, little intro EQ check really, um, which involves a couple of calls for you mm. know 50 euro. That's no problem. Um, and then if it needs to develop into something a bit more long term, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like I for people who are struggling with equalization and i don't mean like you know 15 20 meter divers mm -hmm. but if someone's like um uh, getting into that sort of 30 40 50 meter zone where there's a lot of physical stress and adaptation that is taking place at the same time then um someone like yourself who has like 112 meters of experience and how mm. many years you've been free to have 16, 16 years. years of experience yeah this is who you should be going to for your Thank education you. uh, in equalization don't just uh, go to YouTube <laughs> until you have more videos on YouTube and then go to YouTube. Yeah, then go to YouTube, yeah. <laughs> um, right, and then we come to uh, a topic that um, it's a shame because we did get quite deep into that last yeah. time and it, and it's, it's not something that you can just like do again the way we did it. But, uh, you know, Gary has been open about the fact that uh, in the past he's had issues with... Um, his mental health mm -hmm. and obviously that's you know s severely impacted his um his personal life and his uh you know almost very negatively affected your free diving uh as well um and we like to you know uh what i'm doing more and more on this show is i'm trying to um uh, share you know, not only my own issues that i've had with mental health but uh, find the inspiring stories of other people who are having similar issues and showing that uh, free diving or, or anything, as long as you have something, can really help you to get over the hump, um, get out of the hole in those situations. So maybe you can like tell, tell us, like, you know, what issues did you run into and what kind of impact did it have? So I, I don't know. It, it's in very recent history that these, these sort of things started to pop up and say hello. Um, obviously, they're always there. I was just a bit better at um, burying them and ignoring them. Mm. I guess you, mm. you do that when you're in your 20s and yeah, maybe yeah. 30s. Mm. Um, you just get on with it. Mm. It was just a bit of a whirlwind of working and working and partying, working and partying. And then, to be honest, VB probably, um, probably kicked things into gear a little bit because mm. that, although it was a dream and it was a pleasure to be there, it was stressful. Mm. Everything about 
organizing that and getting there was stress. Mm. It was just an unbelievable wait. And I started that year just, it was small things and I just wasn't able to handle them very well. Small things were, were becoming very big things and they shouldn't have been. The rational part of my brain was just like, why are you reacting like this? This is nothing. Do you have an example of a small thing that would give um, you... Like, and I'm, not, I'm not saying I was going out into the street fighting people, but, you know, it, any altercations that happened in public would spin around in my head for a very long right, time yeah. and i and i and i luckily i had the i had i was able to sort of turn the mirror to myself and say that's not right mm. um and then obviously um issues at home with my partner were were becoming tense you know we just we were unable to communicate mm. well or probably i was unable to communicate you know because i didn't know how there's no one teaches you this stuff yeah yeah you know um, I think we mentioned it last time, didn't we? They, they don't teach you how to file a tax return, how to apply for a mortgage, financial management, or, or how to look after your mental health. Yeah. Uh, what the hell's school for, you know? Yeah, and, and we, we did talk about how s about that in school. Obviously, you know, you don't really have like uh, classes in school that teach you how to manage your emotional intelligence. But also, it's part of the, I think part of the culture where we come from, coming from the mm. UK, the kind of the like the dour, like the stoicism, stiff uh, upper the not, lip, not good version of stoicism, stiff yeah. upper lip, you know, get the job done, you know, yeah. like uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Which I'm not saying that's completely wrong because you do need a little bit of that. Yeah, you know? I mean, I wish more people were like that. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, you've got to be able to uh, take care of the other stuff yeah. as well. I mean, well. if it's like if it's just like a if it forms a barrier that you've trapped yourself inside and you forgot where the door is, you know, then mm. that's that's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then you know, I started to develop feelings like social anxiety mm -hmm. for the first time. I'm I'm a generally fairly social person. Mm -hmm. I don't like let rip and party as much as I used to, but that's because I don't want to. Mm. Um, and that's because I'm, I'm more dedicated to working and freediving. But I started to really be afraid, actually, of being in groups of people. Yeah. And that's unusual. Like starting to become avoidant. Yeah, yeah. I was starting to yeah. avoid, starting to spend a lot more time on my own, retreating, yeah. a lot more time inside, mm -hmm. um, in, in my bedroom, um, and that was worrying. Even even loud places, you know, Asala Square here, the, where the main markets are and stuff. I hated going through there. It's just it's not a, it's not very busy at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, it's it's there's a roundabout and there's mm -hmm. people and there's cars. So and it was just it would freak me out. And it was a real physical reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, I could be in a situation in, in years ago what I didn't like, but this was like shaking, sweaty palms. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, uh, unable to think clearly. Yeah. And this is not I. No, that was something I prided myself on being able to do, is thinking clearly. Mm. That's what's given me my edge with freediving. And that's what made me very good at climbing trees and, and chopping mm. them down my job. I used to be a tree surgeon. Just in case there's no context yeah. there. <laughs> Gary is a professional arborist, is Arborist, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, so, you know, high, high, high danger environment, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You make a mistake and someone's going to die. Mm -hmm. um, or you're going to cause tens of thousands of pounds worth of damage, and I can always think very clearly. Mm -hmm. But but for some reason, at the start of last year, these things started to bubble up, and I couldn't think clearly in these situations. And yeah, there was there were some days that were just that were just really bad. Um, and I noticed I noticed a little way into it that that when things were bad, it would I would go down and I would stay down for a number of days it was two three days L luckily it was never usually more than that and on the fourth day i'd start to slowly just change some some brain chemistry i, start, I looked into it a bit and then i started to think this sounds like depression mm -hmm. you know or some kind of uh you know because depression is Bipolar not it's not linear like that, mate yeah. potentially yeah, yeah. yeah it's not it's not just linear you don't just get depressed and stay depressed yeah, yeah. it's chemicals you know yeah. so there's ups yeah. and downs um and then, um, yeah, there was there was some there was some dark days. There was one day in particular. Uh, I don't I can't really remember the catalyst for that. But one day in particular, I just I couldn't get myself out of my bedroom. I just couldn't. Um, I every time Lynn came in to draw the curtains, as soon as she went out, I'd draw them back. I needed darkness. Mm. I needed like I was awake. My eyes were open, but I just needed to cover mm -hmm. them and just not see anything. Yeah. And I had the duvet over my head. Twelve hours. I'd yeah. wait until I was desperate for the bathroom, like crying for the bathroom, run out, mm. 
do my business, come straight back in, mm-hmm. dark room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, poor, poor Lynn's walking about in the front room, not knowing what to do. Uh, she doesn't know if she's the cause. She doesn't know how she can help. It must have been petrifying to watch someone you love going through that because mm-hmm. I had no control. I had no idea what it was. Yeah. So it's heavy, you know. Um, and l- luckily, I, I, had, I had work. <laughs> so that dragged me out mm. of the house. Um, I was very close to calling off work a number of days, but that's another thing I really pride myself on is, is if I say I'm going to do a job, mm-hmm. I do it. Uh, that comes from being self-employed your whole life, I think. So, I mean, uh, Yang Di, if you listen to this, thank you. You probably don't even know what you did, but you were there wanting to be coached. And uh, <laughs> some days you were the only reason I got out of bed. And and there was a point where Lin, Lin had to physically take me down to work a few days. I'd get my dive stuff on. I'd step out of the front door and I'd freeze and I'd turn straight back. I couldn't I couldn't take those steps out. And for a sort of I think I'm still young, 42. For a young capable 100% still young <laughs> You know, for a capable person who's independent to have those things coming in, it's absolutely petrifying. And yeah. and it I felt like such a little boy. Mm-hmm. So so ill-equipped to deal with it. Mm. So it's very frightening. Um and then, you know, a little way into that, we realized, okay, this is out of our remit. We don't know what to do now. Mm. Um, Lynn had some um, very good support from um, some friends here in Darhab who who sort of rallied the troops. Lynn had an emergency phone call list of people that we could depend on who would be there if she needed help. Um, and then we, d- we decided, okay, the only way to get out of this is to get some proper professional help so so yeah i i spoke to a therapist mm-hmm. lynn, lynn found one that she liked the look of mm-hmm. and booked literally. a call literally, quite yeah. literally yeah <laughs> don't judge yeah. a book by his cover no. unless it's a therapist yeah <laughs> yeah but you know he's a similar age to me and and <clears throat> his interests seem to match yeah whatever it was like it was a bit like choosing a going on mm-hmm. tinder i guess mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it's funny how she chose someone that looks a lot like you and not a young, attractive uh, woman, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I do, I remember very clearly that first day uh, of the first call, uh, Lynn went out and said, I'll leave, leave you the place on your own. Mm. And all of a sudden I was in a quiet house with a laptop. And in five minutes, that laptop was going to ring. And I was going to have to talk to someone and I was just like, turn it off, mate. Just turn it off. Go back in the bedroom. <clears throat> easier. It was far easier to just turn that laptop off and go back under that duvet for another 24 hours. But while I was going through that argument in my head, luckily the phone rang or the, the computer rang. Um, and I stared at it for a few seconds and I hit answer. And then there was a dude on the other end of the phone. <laughs> You know, did all the did all the legal stuff, all the intros, and then he just he just turned to me and said, "So, Gary, what's been going on?" That's all he said, mm. and I fucking burst into tears in front of a man I'd never met before <laughs> <laughs> online. I, it was I was shaking, uncontrollable. Um, yeah, for a good few minutes that, and then slowly he managed to get it out of me, and I just started talking, and I knew. The only ever time I'd properly talk to someone about that stuff was once I was a bit sick and my mum recommended going to see a homeopath. Um, And I was used to seeing doctors. I was used to seeing doctors. So they ask what's wrong and they give you a pill. Whereas this homeopath sat me down and asked me everything about Mm. my life, emotional, physical, family life, parents, everything. And I was like, I came out of there thinking, this is weird. (laughs) <laughs> like that's not what I was expecting but I came out feeling light mm-hmm. really light mm-hmm. and I remembered that and that's what made me answer that phone call mm-hmm. uh, and ultimately uh, you you did a few sessions with this guy yeah and, and I, would I you kept say on. that therapy is what kind of turned things around for you yeah yeah th- th- yeah I think so um, I wouldn't have done it without therapy mm-hmm. and without support mm-hmm. and I don't know where it would have gone you know part of me doesn't really want to think about that, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um yeah but i, I don't I, I won't say there was suicidal thoughts or anything like that uh but i was 
it, it did it did start to seem as a as a a better option mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> at the very less darkest trouble. times a bit less trouble less yeah. yeah yeah a bit easier yeah, yeah. i was yeah. just tired from it tired and confused yeah. and scared yeah and what better way than just to switch things off yeah you know so yeah. i'm not saying i seriously contemplated things like that but it was an idea that was becoming mm -hmm. louder mm -hmm. so I, I i don't really want to uh dwell on what would have happened yeah. because it didn't mm. uh <clears throat> Would you say, um, it's just on a side note here, did did any of this, did at any point, uh, did you feel a lot of self-doubt or lack of worthiness in terms of where you were as a free diver? Like, did you ever feel like I'm getting to be really up in the elite level here, but I don't feel like I should be? Did that ever cross your mind? Every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's only human. I'm I'm quite a reserved person and quite private and I'm I'm I I think I I hope I I hope I uh I'm humble. Um and and to be talked about in circles of people that I've watched for years was it, it made me nervous. Mm. Like I, I was in a band in my teens and like we weren't mega famous, but in our local area where everyone knew us and we'd have 200 people at our gigs and it was great. Mm. The the gigs were the worst bit. I hated them. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd need to have a few beers to yeah. loosen up. Um, they made me nervous. It was the rehearsals that I loved, mm -hmm. you know, hanging mm -hmm. out with your mates and playing music was mm -hmm. brilliant. Yeah. So, so yeah, the imposter syndrome is very real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, your story is almost like unique in the sense, not unique, but it's it's a little bit <clears throat> different in the sense that you c didn't know. I mean, obviously, the, the reason for your kind of uh, breaking down has uh, probably a long history, goes into the past, has lots of different facets, and it's, it would probably be impossible to unravel or unpack yeah. all the things that went into that. But you you didn't have this like before this was something that was more recent at least and yeah. at the level that it became and <clears throat> you you know obviously you recognize that at the core of depressive episodes is an basically an imbalance in brain chemistry yeah so and of course people who are out there suffering from severe anxiety or depression might not like to hear that and we understand that as well because it's it's it, the fact that you got therapy which is not pharmaceutical intervention mm -hmm. to fix your brain chemistry the fact that you talked to somebody and that helps you get out yeah. of the hole shows that you know regardless of what is going on in the brain um there are there are very organic and healthy ways to uh to 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 make progress and to, yeah uh, you might you know i've i've have a long lifelong history of severe debilitating anxiety and then all the alcohol problems and drug issues that came with that as well and um you know hospitalizations and panic attacks and suicidal ideations and all of these kinds of things you know uh, <laughs> at the end of the day uh it was um, being able to communicate my issues, uh, I think, and also opening up to other people about the issues that we were having that finally allowed more space to come into my into mm -hmm. my world. Like it, before that, I felt like I was burying myself one brick at a time. Yeah, and um, and that's the message that I think we want to give out on this podcast, which is that. Uh, a lot, a lot more people out there are struggling through mental oh, yeah. health issues than you think. Probably, if you if you're working in an office of 15 people and they all seem chirpy and cheery every day, probably 70 percent of those people are going through something, or they're on therapy, or they're taking drugs, or they're doing this or that. And um, <clears throat> we spoke we spoke last uh, last time about the fact that uh, you know I, I asked you like how important free diving was for for you and in, in coming out of it or supporting yourself through these mental health issues and we kind of came, came to the conclusion that it's not about free diving it's about having something right yeah yeah i mean 
it's actually one of the lessons I learned when I first started instructing full time is free diving is not for everyone. We want it to be for yeah. everyone. Uh, I would love it, but yeah. some people, nah, they just not, yeah. they just don't. It's not for them, mm-hmm. and that's absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a tough lesson to learn as an instructor because yeah, yeah, you're so yeah. excited, but it's, it's okay. A tough lesson to learn as a free diving podcaster. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, and that's okay. But what you do, you do need. You need to apply yourself. You need to have something that you do that you mm-hmm. enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have a job that you enjoy, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's uh, sorry to interrupt you, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, not to uh, not to disparage the regular job because we have obviously very unique niche jobs, yeah, yeah. but not to disparage somebody who's working maybe a more like a, working in a shop or working in an office or or an engineer or whatever it is not a more regular kind of job, <clears throat> but um, it might be unlikely it's it's probably unlikely that you're going to be passionate about financial analyst uh, position or something but potentially like that. Yeah. i mean i've never been one but um <clears throat> less likely less less what likely what i'm saying is that it, you know if you are in the position that you're struggling with your mental health like what what i can say with confidence is that you know you need to have a healthy body too yeah <clears throat> to manage your brain is part of your body and you need to have a healthy body if you're to have any hope of those chemicals balancing themselves out in a natural way. But it's, it's no good just to sign up for the gym or to go to the, you know, the football club because someone said it was on every Sunday. You need to find something that you want to do. Mm. And then all the physical benefits that come with it are happening automatically and complementary to the fact that you're having fun and enjoying yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I think I think people underestimate physic how good physical activity is yeah, for mental health. In I'm, general. I, I, I'm not saying everybody needs to be you know pushing to dominate a sport or anything like. That. Not everyone that is good at sports, but everyone can go for a mm-hmm. walk and everyone can set an yeah. alarm. Yeah. Uh, everyone can build structure into their day, and that's that's what I really learned with the therapist was actually having a routine, mm-hmm. building a structure, having something you get up and do in the morning and also not being pissed off at yourself if you don't do those mm-hmm. things yeah, yeah if you don't do it for one day if you don't do it for two days not ideal if mm-hmm. you don't do it for three then you're breaking a habit mm-hmm. and yeah. that's a problem mm-hmm. you or know? you might need a new hobby or you might need a new hobby yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah you gotta uh, it, it's a tough one my brothers you know my brothers also had a lot of issues shout out to dave happy birthday <laughs> uh, last week i think um and uh yeah i know like he's um he's hit his own his own issues like he's the opposite of me he's like a big 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 guy and you know he found this thing was walking uh and mm-hmm. I, I was trying to get him into uh, go to a boxing club and do snorkeling and you know do yoga and this and that and he he found that for him like doing walking was what he liked to do and then he started doing like really long walks and then he started walking up mountains and stuff cool. and then he's and now he walks like 10 miles to get to work every day something ridiculous yeah. like this you know so and uh, i can see from talking to him and looking at him that like this is like probably saved him this last uh, mm. couple of years so yeah it could be something as simple as as uh as walking you know yeah i, th- I think if i've learned anything <clears throat> from from that whole sort of period was you would be very surprised how many people actually care about you Mm -hmm. i I was i prided myself on my independence which perhaps made me shut people out Mm. and not ask for help yeah and as soon as i did the help came and there was some good people around me um and it was it was surprising it was humbling and it was it was an honor Mm. to accept that help yeah um but it was hard to ask for it yeah I, I had exactly the same experience. I didn't reach out actually until last year when I had my my last big uh, breakdown. That was the, that was the first time I ever uh, picked up a phone and called somebody. Mm-hmm. And hello, just, Samaritans. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <clears throat> the the value of communicating mm-hmm. that you have an issue and then opening yourself up to the response that you get, which is almost always going to be a positive response yeah and that was something else that we discussed last time was that uh, we're not saying that it's life is more difficult for men but i think that men 
men uh, tend to have less of a available support group around them oh, yeah. with whom they can talk about subjects like this. Because you can yeah. have a group of 15, 20 mates, whatever it is, but how many of them can you sit them down and say, listen, mate, like um, uh, I was crying last night and I don't know why, something like yeah, this. Yeah, know? very few. Uh, and mm. there's, 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 I think men would have very few people like that in their mm. life and mm. potentially none mm. that they yeah. feel like they could. Yeah. But I think if you did just take that step you'd really be surprised yeah, yeah. there was uh I'm, i think i mentioned last time about that post i read about a guy going um going to a halloween party with all makeup on and he arrived and all his guy mates were like dude you look incredible you look amazing your makeup looks brilliant your hair looks amazing and he was like this is what women feel like all the time like they're constantly complimenting each other on the way they look and the way they dress. And he, he said he just felt like top of the world for the next three days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe we should start to treat was he each just other more in like drag after that. The <laughs> maybe, <whole> time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe he was dressed just like a drag queen or maybe a skeleton. Oh. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you can hear that. Is that no, a goat or a child? That, but it sounds like a child in distress. <laughs> yeah. But they're often in distress here. So we'll oh. just leave them. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So just to round up this uh, part of the conversation, no, we wanted to um, to make it clear. Like, it doesn't matter if you're like one of the deepest men in the world. Uh, you, you know, it's very normal and common for for people at all levels of society and all statuses to suffer from mental health issues. It's an absolute epidemic around the world. I think a lot of it has to do, you know, with a, a deep disconnection with the things that are really important, like uh, your social group, other people having a doing something in your life that you really enjoy and feel passionate about. But uh, if you are listening, and I know a lot of you guys listen because you're free divers, and a lot of free divers are weird and messed up. And um, but if you are listening and you are struggling and you haven't reached out to anyone yet, first of all, you're more than welcome to give a shout out to me. Send me an email, send me a message on Instagram, say, listen, I'm, I need help. I'm not going to say I'm going to be your therapist, but, you know, like I, like, uh, I discussed with Jordy last time when Jordy was discussing her own serious issues, we can give you a little bit of reassurance and then try to help direct you in the, in the right direction for someone who's more professional than us to talk to you if that's what you want. Or if you just want to have a tongue wag and yeah. even a phone call, yeah. If that's your situation, then please, I will always make time for that. And I think Gary's feeling the same way. Yeah, I'd, I'd be honoured if someone thought that they could reach out to me. I think that would um, that would make me feel really good about myself, actually. Mm. If, so, if someone, especially a stranger, thought, hey, Gary, you've got yeah. five minutes for a chat. Well, that's the thing. Sometimes it is a stranger that you need. Yeah, right? that Sometimes you need, you're yeah. too close to the people that you know, it should be helping yeah. you and you, you, you actually do need a bit of distance. And, yeah. Uh, perspective. But one yeah. thing I can definitely, mm. I, I can promise is that once you do dump some stuff out of your head and just say it or write it, you know, you will feel better. Mm. Just get it out of there onto a bit of paper and then you can burn the bit of paper afterwards, whatever. Um, uh, but just get it out of here, you know, out of your head. Yep. Yep. So, uh, Thank you for sharing that. It's not um, it's not easy um, to uh, to open up about things like this. Uh, well, actually, maybe in our position it is easy because now we're like excited to open up and share that. It's, yeah, it's important. And to be honest, it's just two blokes sitting in a room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm forgetting this is going to go online. <laughs> yeah, fully online and uh, yeah, <clears throat> fully promoted this one. Yeah. Um, but uh so moving on mm-hmm. let's uh wrap things up by getting uh okay so this is burying more men what that's what you've written that's burying written. more yeah, men that's when i write like that <laughs> burying more men okay bury nog more men. i haven't buried anyone in months and it says orange origins and time which i thought that was very <laughs> profound but <laughs> You're writing album titles, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just coming up with names. When I'm in a rock band, I'm going to call my first album Origins Burying More Men. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so we know that you are hopefully planning to get to VB again this year mm-hmm. uh, if we can uh, raise the funds for that. Yep. So that's fantastic. But in terms of like um, 
medium to long term plans? Do you have any in terms of where you would like to see yourself in the next few years? Um, uh, yeah, I'm starting to sort of cast my eyes past free diving. I'm I'm aware that you know I can't be working and and, and training like this when I'm 50. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I've got I've got. Don't tell Pete Bodman that. <laughs> Don't tell Pete Bodman. Yeah, sorry, Pete. He's nine Pete's, years too late. <laughs> yeah, Pete's an anomaly though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've, I've, yeah, I've got some projects uh, coming. I'm working. I have- so that, that almost seemed like entirely directed at Mike Board, who I think probably just turned 50. <laughs> yeah, but he's another anomaly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Jesus, he's, like a, he's, he's action he's man. He's a real life he man, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. G.I. Joe, <laughs> G.I. Mike. Yeah. Um, mm. So I was lucky enough to have a, uh, a documentary maker follow me at VB and in the lead up to it as well. So we've got... a. Uh, uh, rough edit for that and that we're trying to we're trying to send that out the, the second round of funding has just been applied for last week actually so we'll know from the norwegian film institute mm-hmm. in a few weeks whether we've got money to um mm, cool. to, to do more and then i'm developing um i'm developing my website should be live in a couple of couple of months hopefully mm. maybe a bit sooner um and then i'm trying to fill up uh october for coaching here in dahab and then and then maybe a little tour around asia Mm -hmm. um but certainly competition wise uh there's vb there's world championships at the end of the year and then who knows what Mm -hmm. what else for next year i'm i'm also working with an agent to try and get a sponsorship deal Mm -hmm. so that next Mm -hmm. year can hopefully be a year of at least sort of four good deep competitions really Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you guys are out there and you like the sound of Gary and his honesty and, you know, being a genuine bloke and uh, not putting on any airs for this uh, interview um, or the other interviews, then you're available in Dahab for coaching. People can come and they can spend a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month with you, right? And they can basically, uh, within reason... um, Yeah, I was with you and Klaus the other day Mm -hmm. there in the water. I see how it operates. You know, it's a very... uh, what I was worried is like a very low stress, high reward kind of yeah. uh, coaching environment to be in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, there has to be many rewards. It's, mm. it, you know, this is this is basic psychology for humans. We will do something that we get reward out of. Mm. So this boot camp style beasting people, uh, it's not. It's proven that it's not really mm-hmm. how we, mm-hmm. we're going to learn a skill. Yeah. So don't come to me then. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, and um, what was I going to say? And just so that we can finish up on some nice uh, little uh, clickbaity uh, uh, topic here, mm. uh, and I'm not sure if it's a question that I asked you uh, previously because I definitely don't have the short or long term memory for that kind of thing. But uh, like looking back now at yourself, like ten years ago, like um, if you had to give yourself one piece of advice, just in general. For mm. life, let's not even talk about free diving. What would it be? Oh, if I could go back, speak to ten years younger, Gary. Mm. Did you deliberately ask this off the bat? You could have asked yeah, me this yeah, an I hour ago. Make, I just make you, stuff up. You could have given me an hour and... to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> I would have forgotten about it after yeah. an hour. I would have written something like pineapples on here, which was meant <laughs> to be the question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> talk. Talk more. Open I think up more. just one word. Yeah. Just talk. Yeah. Just talk. Yeah. Communicate mm. uh, yeah. with with people that are close to you. With people that aren't close to you. Just you know, for you as well as other people. Yeah. Just yeah. talk. You know, something that I I realized that maybe I didn't put into words for myself, but I was thinking about you know every day we go to the blue hole. Every day we sit around. And we listen to people talking about fucking mouth fills and soft palates and contractions. And um, and I'm thinking about my own diving, and I'm thinking I'm not I'm not a great diver, but I'm not a shabby diver. I mean, I'm taking steps up. I'm not going back down. I go up. I progress. But uh, to be, I never had any problems in my diving. I never had any problems in my diving. The only thing I ever had a problem with is my personal situation. Mm-hmm. And I only ever had. I was drinking too much or I was smoking too much or I was uh, having a um, conflict with this person or I was not up to date with my podcast schedule or i wasn't didn't mm. work didn't go to the gym for three weeks whatever it is it's all this uh lack of clarity in my mind came from those um, yeah. personal things and those were the only things that ever stopped me from going deeper in free diving yeah and, yeah um, 
Uh, that's that's the lesson that I would like to share is that you know like you need to be uh, clear minded to yeah. to to dive deep. Yeah. Well, not in your case. No, you didn't dive quite deep when you're all fucked up. Uh, yeah, I was, I was. Yeah, I kind of was. Uh, th- that's another strong point of me. I can <clears throat> channel, um, which is what made me excel at climbing mm. trees and what's given me my edge in free diving. I can I can channel stress fairly well, but mm. there's only a certain amount. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I wouldn't that period when when my sort of mental issues were strongest, I wasn't deep training. Mm. So mm. you know, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for sharing today, Gary. Really, uh, really do appreciate you opening mm. up on those uh, sensitive issues. See, uh, and already now, I feel really light, yeah. and 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 just, I just, I just feel happy now. Nice, yeah, good, <laughs> good. And that's impressive because it's the second time we've done it. So there second was a time, yeah, we could be a little bit fatigued by this whole conversation, but yeah. um, no, I mean, uh, giving the opportunity for people to uh, help themselves and, and be helped is always going to make you feel yeah give give us a shout if you you need a chat yeah cool so all the best for this year i hope we can get you the vb and um otherwise it's been really nice meeting you in person hanging Mm. out with you diving with you it's an amazing community in dahab guys please come to dahab if you haven't if you really want to be completely embedded inside the weirdness of um, people who do nothing but free diving all all day uh this is where to come come and join us gary thank you so much nice one have a good evening all right bye-bye we did it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Taped up to hell, the camera. <laughs> <laughs>